Justin E. Torres. I'm here with the Everything Voiceover Podcast. Uh, we're here with uh, Steve Tardio. Hey, Steve. Hey, how's it going? An amazing voiceover actor. Uh, I believe we we met back in uh, the Pitt Improv, musical improv days, right? right. Yes. Did we, take, did we take three levels took together? three levels together. Jesus, that was a long time ago. A very long time ago. <laughs> Do you remember the spot that we did for or one, during... Um, I just remember you were John F. Kennedy. I do <laughs> remember that. I do. <laughs> and that was Bobby Kennedy. You were Bobby Kennedy. I died during the phone call. You died because you you called me saying you were scared to go to Dallas. Yes. <laughs> and I said and I said to you, um, John, please, nothing's going to happen to you. You're going to be fine. I have more of a chance of getting shot in the head than you do because <laughs> you're the president. And I remember you doing like the era era. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I'm glad I picked up on it because you were like, Bobby, I don't know if I should go to Dallas. And I was like, I'm like, oh, I got it. Got it. OK, that that actually very much sticks in my mind. Yeah, that's that's burned in my brain. That one. <laughs> so you're sag You've got your setup here. We're recording this in your place. And there's a kick ass voice room that's all set up. You started behind the scenes first, correct? Right. Yeah. And was it more of a natural transition because you had the equipment and whatnot? Uh, because I saw on your website that you were like doing promos as a placeholder. Right, scratch tracks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was a writer, producer, and on air promos for years. And um, what happened, like, you write the promo after you watch the show and or the movie, write the promo, you go into an edit room, and uh, the editor's there with you putting all the pieces together, all the video together, any kind of um, also sound bites from the show or the movie. And you, ha you, you're putting in place of it, the producer will usually do a scratch track to for the copy yeah. until the real quote unquote real voiceover person comes in. Yeah. And so I was doing it, but the way I was doing it was I was reading it exactly how I wanted it. Oh, there you go. So it was like the timing, the uh, and the um, just the feel of the spot, whether it's happy or something serious. It was like the timing of it all, the inf the inf inflection, yeah, the inflection, inflection of my yeah, that's a that's a word um, of my voice, everything. And so everybody was telling me, like even uh, other producers, the editors I was working with, the uh, audio engineer that was mixing the spots, hey, you should do this. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah, all right, sure, sure. It just sounds like a, a pipe dream. I was working um, with a lot of well-known voice talent, including uh, Joe Cipriano, who was voicing spots uh, at, a, at a network I was working at. And I would direct Joe. And the way I would do it would be like, and Joe's like dialing in from his, his studio out in California yeah. to New York. And I would say, well, Joe, here, do it like this. And then I would read it like the exact, <laughs> the exact way I wanted it and uh, hit this word, hit that word. And even he said as a joke, he said, why don't you just do it? <laughs> and so I was like, then I thought, well, maybe I will. And there's actually, I'll, I'll try and make it a quick, funny little, funny story. Um, we had a new creative director at this network I was at and every creative director wants to come, who's new comes in and wants to make their mark. Mm -hmm. So, uh, she said, everybody, all the producers bring in five of your top voiceover people. Cause I want to, we want to change the sound of the network. So, and this is, um, so we all had brought in like our top five VO people and we we're going to listen to every, every one of them during a meeting. And I don't remember the producer's name who did it, but she played on a CD of all things, um, this one voiceover talent. And everybody's kind of like with their eyes closed and they're um, listening to everybody. And so she played this one uh, voiceover guy's reel and my eyes are closed and I'm looking down and then I look up and everybody's staring at me. <laughs> and they're all like, they're like, is that you? Is that, they thought I was this guy. Yeah. And they thought I was like, it was like a, I was using a <laughs> stage name or something. And I'm like, no, that's not me. And as a joke, everybody, yeah, we'll just use Steve as this. And still, I'm still on the fence. I'm like, <laughs> all right, if one more person says I should pursue this, I'm going to do it. Then later that day, the creative director said, I need to see you in my office. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, great. What did I do? And they'll close the door. She even said, oh, God, I'm in trouble. And uh, she says, you know, if it's okay if you do this voice work <laughs> and you don't, you know, you don't, it's okay if you, you know, it's not like you're going to get in trouble. They thought I was using a stage name. Oh, they thought you were, they thought that she, trouble. she was not convin convinced oh, that she... that was not me. <laughs> and I'm like, I swear to God, that's not me. So finally I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm uh, going to, I'm going to start looking into this. So it seems like you're coming from it from a production perspective. So you already really know how uh, it sounds. So it must be easy for you to look at scripts nowadays and guess what it's supposed to sound like. How do you attack a script? 
that that comes from an audition, specifically an audition, because because there's a lot of people out there that just see it as Greek and they don't know how to uh, get the momentum running. So how do you attack a script like for a promo or a video game? Well, for um, a promo uh, is different for a commercial because um, sometimes it's a hard sell. I mean, you, a lot of people get. Uh, for direction in the copy, it's like make it conversational. That's usually in, in commercial work. Yeah. Promo, you have a certain amount of seconds yeah. to do it. Now, usually if you're doing a, com a commercial or a video game audition, you can play with it a little bit. Yeah. That's why the improv is very important too, because um, sometimes you can, they'll, they'll want you to improv a little bit. Promo is pretty much like what is written. That's it. You know, don't go off scripts. Okay. Don't improvise. You've got a certain amount of seconds to get this stuff in. Get it in. So as far as a promo goes, it's like um, make sure that you're pretty, you're hitting every every word appropriately and also you're getting it within a certain amount of time. And um, that'll probably come more if you book the gig. Okay. Then they'll say, okay, you need to tighten this up. You need to shorten this. You need to – you can take a little longer with that. But as far as it depends on um, on what the promo is for too, if it's a if it's a dramatic like serious movie, if it, or show, if it's horror, which I don't do those. That's not yeah, my voice. Yeah. That's not my voice. <laughs> my voice is more the the Nickelodeon Disney Channel kind of stuff. Okay. So you know, make it fun, and that's what I do with that. And um, you know, and you're talking. It's who you're talking to. Also, everybody says make it like you're talking to one person. And that's definitely true for promos. So if I'm talking to my niece who watches Nickelodeon, you know, it's almost like, you know, guess what's coming up? And then all of a sudden you can start getting into like on an all new Nick, blah, you know, and then get into it that way. And it's like, I'm trying to sell my niece. I'm trying to sell one person instead of thinking that you're trying to sell a huge audience, Everybody, you know, yeah. like you're talking to, you're talking to your best friend or your niece or your kids or, or your mom or whoever's, whoever you can associate the, the promo with. Now, uh, uh, on average, how many auditions do you do uh, a week here? Here, uh, here it's um, turning into it's turning into a lot more of MP3s. Okay. Like you're getting an audition from uh, from your agent and then uh, doing it from here. Um, I, from here, I would say at least so at least one a day. So it's at least five, anywhere from five to maybe 10 a okay. week is what I'm doing. And they're coming in from um, all, all cor corners of the country. So not just New York. It's also like so I'll get some from my Los Angeles agent, my Atlanta, I've got one. Chicago, I have one and an agent. So uh, they can come in from anywhere. And San Francisco, there's one. Um, it just, the only thing about that is sometimes I get the same audition from different. That's crazy. Uh, so yeah. how do you deal with that? Uh, first come, first serve. Oh, good, good. Yeah, yeah. Good. And I, I don't let the others know, oh, sorry, someone beat you to it. It's yeah. just either yeah. I'll, I'll um, they usually don't want to hear back like, no, I'm not doing this one. Yeah. Or because there are some some auditions I have to pass on. So um, either it's a conflict or if it's, uh, again, the union, non-union thing. Yeah, totally, um, totally. So it's like I won't unless they really do like get a hold of me and they say, are you auditioning for this? And then then I'll have to explain either why or why not. And um, my agent in Los Angeles is usually very good at convincing me to do it. Oh, no, you should do it because of whatever reason. And. Um, sometimes I do them and sometimes though, I definitely have to draw the line and be like, no, nah, I can't do it. So, uh, we mostly have newer type VO artists going to everything voiceover.com and you come with the same feel like this is the wild west, you know, you're just putting a bunch of stuff out there. You're creating your own studio. You're doing it makeshift 99% of the time. Do you have any recommendations of someone just starting out? What do you think is imperative that they do, whether it be classes or coaches or, or anything? And this is just from the non-union perspective, because I know that once you get to the level of union, it's a whole different ball game. You got to have that demo done. You got to have it professionally done. But for the non-union people out there, do you have any recommendations uh, as far as classes or coaching? I think uh, a good class and a good coach is definitely a plus. Don't worry about uh, getting all the equipment yet. I know eventually they're going to want, uh, people are going to want to know if you have your own quote unquote home studio and your home studio can be basically um, what we have set up here for your show right now, which is a couple of microphones sitting on, sitting on a desk or on a table right here. And now you can hear the room sound yeah. in here, but um, regardless, you know, it's not something uh, anybody starting out with needs to worry about right now. Right. Get it, going to a class to kind of know what you're in store for and then asking around, um, well, who's a good coach? 
And also, I know that coaches, it all costs money. So there are certain coaches that you'll see that might be way too pricey. And there are some that are just right. And yeah. those are the ones where it's like, okay, you know, you know that they're not trying to um, take you for every cent you have. And um, also the really good coaches too will have like, most of them have a free consult with yeah. you. So and they'll let you know, okay, well, here's what I you know, here's what I see, here's the direction I think your your voice is going in, whether it's promo, whether it's narration, um, commercial, um, what have you. So just get some information first. I've had a couple of people uh, ask me just for like an informal inter uh, informational interview, yeah. just what should I do? And so, yeah, just take a couple classes and a uh, little free introductory um, consult from a coach, Yeah, I think yeah. Is, is definitely a plus. And then you can get a feel for... Uh, for it. Yeah. Initially, when I got started, I worked with Melissa Gray of Academy of Art back in San Francisco and did coaching sessions with her. And on the side, I bought like a microphone and, and, and worked a makeshift studio and whatnot. Actually, this Audio Technica uh, microphone that we're using right now is, is the thing I used four or five years ago. It took years uh, before I started actually getting jobs, but but I think you do have to have kind of an acting, uh, an acting coach or a VO coach, or like classes to start off at least to get the get the ball rolling as far as acting goes. There's plenty of sources online to help you uh, um, help you out, and the practice makes perfect mentality really really holds true here when it comes to non-union because it's a playing field where uh, people can do like a million auditions, uh, and and at least there's some kind of practice going. Once you hit the level of union. Then, then you can afford to start picking and choosing. Now, your setup here is insanely huge. And, uh, <laughs> it's overkill right now. There's some things I, I really don't need, but I see uh, I see three monitors. This this looks a lot more like a video editing uh, suite than 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 a voice actor thing. Right. It pretty say. much is. It pretty much is. There's I do a lot some video editing too, but. It really does help because if, uh, let's say, for example, I'm using um, Pro Tools, yeah. you know, I need to kind of move some things around so I could see other, um, see different uh, windows up at the same time. So um, there's that is what I would do. And, and, um, and, but mostly that's, that's more for like, I could have like two monitors. The yeah. third one was when I was also doing some web radio uh, programs. And so it was like, well, this, I need the DJ mixing thing over here and I need um, my board over here and I need to see some other things on this side. So it's a lot and uh, <laughs> it's, it's definitely too much. And um, I will probably downsize two monitors probably if you're, if you're into mixing stuff. Now, when I listen to your demo, uh, it sounds, you sound really young and I can definitely see the whole Nickelodeon aspect. Totally, totally understand that. C clicks whenever I hear your voice. You're moving to LA soon, right? Is I'm going. I'm not. It's it's something where uh, I'm going to go out there for a little while to, because uh, that's where all the animation is. Yeah, yeah. And there's some here. I mean, it's not, um, but it's not like nothing is here. Yeah. But uh, I've I've auditioned for a couple of uh, animated series here and gotten some callbacks, which was really great. Great. And. Um, but 90% of it, I would say, and that's even being a little more generous, I'm, I'm thinking more like 95% maybe is out in, mostly in Los Angeles. And there's a small percentage here. And uh, the funny thing also, I have an agent in Los Angeles who sent me auditions for, for Disney shows, nice. like animated shows. So it's kind of weird. Okay, well, you're in Los An you're in, they're in Los Angeles, you're in uh, Atlanta and you're sending it here to New York and yeah. now I got to send it back to Atlanta and they're going to send it to them. So it's, but I'm, but um, from what I hear, it's like, they want to know that you're available. But like within you can come in yeah, yeah you can come in and do this and uh so i'm gonna go there for a little while and see i'm gonna see go. and i'm gonna see i've got some things uh lined up with some casting directors out there another thing about uh getting uh that got set up because of some workshops that i've done yeah, yeah. and um where it's like the the voiceover community whether you're union or non-union it's a very close-knit yeah. community and it's pretty much everybody does know everybody else so if you hear Going back to what you asked me before about what uh, people who are starting out um, should do, if you start to hear a name over and over and over again, that's a good sign. Because yeah. uh, there's some people where it's like, yeah, I've heard this person's name, like whether it's a coach or a consultant or a casting director. Yeah, I've heard this person's name a bunch of times. So let me and let me get a hold of them and and um, they'll they will get back to you eventually, which is nice. Now, regarding uh, taking on auditions and whatnot. 
What do you think is uh, the difference between a good voiceover actor and a bad voiceover actor? Is it uh, uniqueness that that uh, that makes you stand out? Because you always hear that uh, from certain casting directors or, or coaches that you want to be different, but also you want to sell the right way. Like if I see a car commercial, uh, um, I'm going to think like John Hamm style, but you know I might do it a little different and add a little bit of flavor. But when you're listening, what do you think makes the cream rise to the top? It's the uniqueness, I think. I think so. Yeah, it's it's that. I mean, obviously having the talent and the chops to know um, what words to hit. Yeah. But again, it's like, would I be a good voice for Mercedes yeah. or would John Hamm be a good voice for Mercedes? And mm -hmm. obviously John Hamm is, is the man. voice. And for some reason, uh, an old agent of mine did set, set me up on those auditions for Mercedes. Yeah. And even I was like, what? <laughs> and so I was like, no, 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 I'm more, of, and it's on my demo, a Fiat. <laughs> A Fiat yeah. 500 Sport is more my uh, style of voice, not not a Mercedes. Uh, all right, so uh, we're back here. I uh, had a little bit of technical difficulties. Uh, my Zoom H4N runs off of AA batteries, which died right there in the middle of Steve's talk about uniqueness, but yes. we've got that. So um, regarding, regarding uh, equipment and whatnot, um, you recently... Put up a audition, not not, not an audition, like a, a mic it's a sample, shootout. Yeah, it's like a, a sample. Mic. Yeah, just a sample for um, Widom's World or the, or the uh, it was voiceover body shop. Vo voiceover body, the VBS. Yes, like the OBS. Oh. Yeah, the they OBS. know have all the BS on VO, <laughs> which is a great podcast to yeah. listen to. I recommend that for everyone because these guys know exactly what they're talking about. And they put up your um, your blue mic. The, what was it called again? That was the baby bottle. Baby bottle. Baby bottle and uh, the Sennheiser. Sennheiser 416 shotgun mic. Which is a workhorse. I've that's seen the, it. That's a standard. That's what everybody um, tends to uh, travel with if they mm -hmm. need to. But that's a mic where it's like you see that just about everywhere in all studios. Yeah. That and, well, the Neumann U87. Yeah, the Neumann, the, the tiny Neumann I see all the time. And I and I also see the 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 big long shotgun the HN, was it, what's it called? The Sennheiser 416. 416, yeah. So those two I see everywhere. And the fact that I love, the fact that you were, you were even attempting to get another microphone and, and you've got right. this workhorse that's yeah. like sitting there. And then they showed it on the thing and I couldn't tell the difference between one and the other. I was like, they're both, I, I, I almost feel like once you get to a certain professional standard for microphones, You've got the you've got the Neumann and you've got the the Sennheiser and then everyone else is just like around it. But if you can get to that kind of quality, and this this mic, it still sounded good. Yeah, it yeah. sounded pretty good to me. And this is another reason why it's so great that the the voiceover community is so close a close knit family almost because you can send that out. Like I I emailed George, Dan and George and I said because. Uh, the reason why I, I've sampled blue microphones before, yeah, and um, and I I really like them. At first, I liked the look, mm -hmm. and then I was like, well, just because it looks cool doesn't fancy, mean it's great. They look like uh, what old style, like an old 20s. style, but for the twenty first century, it's very <laughs> weird. It's like is that an old? It's very their their design is really really just very unique and very cool, meaning cool, <laughs> uniquely cool, not uniquely weird. But, um, and even they had, um, I was saying before, there was a certain, um, there's a certain music store where it seems like guitars are the center <laughs> of their business, but, yes, um, they, they had, but they, they have a pro audio, uh, department and, uh, that particular day I was there just looking at some stuff. Cause I like to window shop and, yeah, you know, yeah. and, uh, they had a representative from blue microphones there and he had a line of all their microphones out. And so they were having a shootout right there in the store. Oh, yeah. So I said, I asked him, I said, well, I, I'm a voiceover actor. What do you recommend? Because I'm, I can't shell out three grand for a Neumann. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got my, um, the Sennheiser 416 shotgun mic. I got a used one. Oh, wow. And it still like works. It's still, it's still great. Yeah. Wow. It's still, it worked great. Works great. Not worked. Works great. <laughs> and um, so he, I said, what quality mic do you have that's like a Neumann U87? Yeah. And so he pointed to, he said, well, the, the blue mouse mm. microphone is really great. And so I, I really put it through the test. I had my, uh, my iPhone with me and I had the clean music for, uh, theme song to the Tonight Show, Jimmy <laughs> Fallon's Tonight Show. And I said, I want to try and announce with this. And sure enough, they plugged my, my phone in and they had the, the they 
brought the music up and I talked into the um, the Blue Mouse yeah. microphone and it sounded really great. So for live announce, it's really it's got a really nice warm sound and it emphasizes the low end of um, both male and female voices. Yeah, and which is great because I like we I've heard before that um, even though I I read mostly for children's stuff. Yeah, it's I have a low end to my voice. Yeah, yeah. a little one. It's a little just and this is like coaches have told me this too. So there's a little oomph to it. Yeah, yeah totally. where it's not just super high pitched like young sounding stuff. So I wanted something that could emphasize the low end of my voice. So um, I was like, I kept looking at the blue microphone like one day, one day. Yeah. And uh, I finally tried the baby bottle okay. because um, um, Dan Leonard from VOBS, he, they had a mic shootout episode where they were trying a bunch of different ones and the blue baby bottle mic, everybody was like, wow, yeah. that sounds awesome. So I wanted to try it out and I did. And so I sent Dan and George a sample of my... Um, just of an MP3 of me reading into the bl the blue baby bottle and then reading into the uh, Sennheiser. Yeah. And uh, Dan said, I can't tell the difference. <laughs> and so George Same is here. the technical one. He's the one who yeah. builds all the studios for all the major voiceover um, actors and, and whatnot. And he knows his stuff. So watching them listen to my, <laughs> my voice and George has his eyes closed and he's really like studying. He's really getting in the tent. And he, he, he said the opposite of what I thought the mics were. I thought the baby bottle sounded too bright and my Sennheiser had the oomph, yeah, the like oomph. the low end. And George said the complete opposite. Yeah. He said, no, for the Sennheiser it sounds a little too bright, just a little bit, not too much. And the blue um, has a little more uh, warmth to it. So he recommended for, <laughs> so it shows you what I know. Um, he recommended for longer format stuff, like maybe audio books, use the blue yeah. mic. For the shorter, um, harder selling stuff, use the Sennheiser. And the uh, the blue bottle, the baby bottle is about... That's like what five hundred? Three, three or four hundred dollars. Three to four hundred dollars. So yeah. again, to anybody wanting to start out um, getting equipment, you don't have to spend like Sennheiser and definitely not Neumann yeah. U eighty seven kind of money. Yeah. No, not at all. Um, I wanted to. Um, I did like the baby bottle, but um, I tried like years ago when I tried the Blue Mouse microphone. I actually uh, decided let me let me see about this, and so I traded it. I traded the baby bottle in for the the Blue Mouse, and which is sitting right in front of me right now, right oh, here. Yeah. It's yeah. right in in this awesome cherry wood box right now. <laughs> yeah, so, that, I have a Caddy hundred one hundred S that comes in some of those similar boxes. Their they presentation of, is great. The, yeah, it's really <laughs> they really beautiful. care. In fact, I'm going to slide it out right now. This is the blue mouse microphone. So, so Justin can take a look at it here too. Look at it, and I'll foam it around like it here. It looks like rum. It bottle. looks like a yeah. It looks like it's like like <laughs> a nice bottle of alcohol should be in here. But and I so I'm, I've had this for a week now, and for some reason I don't like to leave it out. <laughs> I pack it away every night, every time. I, so I'm going to try and slide it out of this package here. But it even has the little. So desiccate thing in little. here too so i'm gonna and it looks very cool it's yeah. tiny it's small but i'm gonna let you hold it oh, here yeah. and what's your first that's a little he it's it's heavy. heavy it's a heavy mic it's there's a, a lot mic. of stuff going on in there and, and so it's, what is it running the wire through the two headphones <laughs> it's like it looks like yeah it looks like the the um <laughs> It looks like the cardioid part of the mic here that you talk into. It looks like it's wearing headphones, like upside down <laughs> headphones. But uh, yeah, I think the wires go up through here. Yeah, just once Once I heard the fact that this mic, this little monster, the $300 monster actually sounds that good. Yeah. I was totally surprised. And I, and uh, I'm I'm I just started using the uh, the Caddy 100s, which is kind of like a prosumer type microphone, and it sounds pretty good. I I watched the mic shootouts, and it sounded beautiful to me. Mm -hmm. And plus, it also has the added effect of like you can put guitars on it, and there's a lot of like right. workhorses that that a lot of musicians will use, and just put like someone on it, it'll sound good. So I wanted something a little bit flexible along those lines. But I always thought that like even that was that was at about 500. I never thought there'd be anything that great below 500. And the fact that this thing, this little guy, and the, this is not a recommendation or an advertisement for this to everyone out there that this is going to magically make you a good voiceover actor. There's so many different things that, are, that that you have to take in consideration. Number one is just you have to be good. You have to act. You have to know how to act. You have to know how to take on a script. And you have to be patient enough to be able to know that no one thing is going to get you jobs. I think a million, uh, a million different things are going to get you jobs. 
and uh, you have to just keep versatile and keep doing different things. But this mic was impressive uh, when when you put it out there, and I, I I think the next level of my microphone buying will probably be the the Neumann, just because I trust it. I'm tired of going into full studios, seeing a microphone, and being like and then still thinking about getting a different type of right. microphone. When this one works for them, and it's yeah. like, if it works for them, it should work for any. Right. And that's like up at about 1,000 or 1,200 or something like that. That's what they're at right the now. The T, what's it, the T103? Uh, the, well, yeah, the 103, yeah. The, the tinier Neumann. I think it's TL103. Yeah. I'm not sure. I know the 103 part. I don't know the letters. Yeah. But um, yeah, that actually my agent here in New York has that in the, their booth. Yeah. It's almost like they're just given out to agents and everything. It's like, here, it is. take, 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 take this thousand dollar microphone because it's the best for the least amount of money that right. you can get. That's right. A, that's it's the, it's the brand name and definitely uh, the same between uh, Neumann and also uh, Blue, Blue is um, something um, that it's definite quality. Yeah. It's good quality. And um, you're probably, so you're at a point now where it's like, okay, I need to. I can. I want to spend a little more to get a better mic. Yeah, I mean, like I haven't. I haven't quite. I'm gonna give the CAD about another six, seven, eight months just yeah. to, just to be able to. I've already made its money back in spades for that. But there's always this part of my mind since I've gotten to the point where I'm, I'm making a decent amount of money, a uh, regular. Yeah. That you wonder if this one thing will just get it, get you over the hump a little bit more. You know, right. you wonder, and that's 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 the thing that most voice actors wonder is like, if I do this, will it? affect that and and the one thing i can tell people out there is that it's it's uh it's trial and error 90 percent of the time like had have there been points in your voiceover career where you had to try different things or was it how did you get up to that level where you were comfortable enough to be like i'm gonna go get that i'm gonna i'm gonna turn that uh that closet into a into um and i I, we haven't talked about the closet not yet no it's insane he's got (laughs) he's got foam on every side these these moving blankets, whatever they are, I don't know yeah, what they are. These are actually called. Um, uh, I, my um, my friend uh, recommended them to me. She said uh, they're they're kind of moving blankets, but they're called like sound blankets. So they're specifically like to hang up sound for um, yeah for recording vocals. Those are so heavy, and they are. They, I could tell. Just it's like having a mattress that's really right. dense right around you, yeah. and. Yeah, and once I once you walk into his studio, it's just a closet, but it's packed with foam, and and once you go in, you could hear the world just kind of close around yeah, you a little bit. Yeah, it kind of disappears bit. out there, and it's like good sound absorption. I know a lot of people say, well, soundproof. You need. I had a lot of constru- since it's an apartment building, I had a lot of construction going on around yeah. me like recently too, and where I took some video just so you can hear the and just aimed it towards the ceiling so you could hear all the. Bah! and everything going on and there's no way I even think with a whisper room yeah. I have a feeling you're probably not going to be able to um, if it's happening right above you or around you wherever it is it, I had some people that don't really know the business well it sounds like you need some soundproofing and it's like well that's <laughs> it's well there's it's not nothing is soundproof <laughs> it's true it's, uh, it's sound absorption where you get a nice dead sound yeah. and you don't have like like the room sound that you're hearing with this yeah. podcast right now yeah but um you know this isn't made we're not doing an audition right now oh, yeah, so totally. it's, so we can you can you can hear the room sound here yeah every single room that i've been in like even the ones that i've made and then the ones that i've done audiobooks in in studios they've all had to stop for a horn yeah. and they've all had like even if it's 12 floors up if someone's banging you're always going to hear it i don't care what people say about whisper rooms they're they're not going to be foolproof. They're not going to be, and, and and it's almost like you don't really want it to be entirely foolproof. You don't want your sound to just go out to nowhere. There's got to be some kind of feel to it. Right. There has to uh, be that, uh, like that sound absorption. Yeah. I did see a video recently where I was looking at, because in the closet, it's like my closet that ha- has the sound absorption in it and it's treated, it's not 100% foolproof, yeah. like I said. And uh, like I was telling Justin just earlier that, uh, Someone above who lives, I don't know on what floor, <laughs> they must have a washer dryer in their apartment beca- yeah. and run it at a certain time because you hear tr- like trickling water during, and I'm trying to do an audition. At least it's not a job. <laughs> yeah. If it's an audition, maybe you could probably get away with it a yeah. little bit. But still, like it's just hearing right after you slit your name, all of a sudden just hearing like water trickling. It's like, ah, all right. And so you, I, either I stop or I, I do it a little <laughs> later or something like that. But 
uh, I did see someone who was uh, had a whisper room, and he actually said, "This is why I love my whisper room." He recorded a job, then he like got out of the booth. Went, it was in his house. He went upstairs, opened the door, and there was all this like lawn work going on, oh. and like you know trees being cut down. He goes, "This is why I love my whisper room." So well, it does help, well, he's but lucky it depends where you to are. Also, live under in a two floor building, <laughs> right? Or it was his house, yeah. Basement. So he lives out in the suburb. He's also got like it's probably like a nuclear proof. To be able to yeah, I would things. think so. Yeah, uh, like the, not all of us have that. No, I was when I was first starting out. I was in my I was, I was at my grandmother's house, and I'd set up a, a closet, not similar to that, but I tacked towels everywhere, and it worked, and it worked. Um, but we lived near an airport, so every ten minutes, I'd have to stop. Right. For ten and just and hope that another plane wasn't going to come in and try and fit it in between the planes because <laughs> there's no there's no way to fully super, su- soundproof your studio without oh, going overboard on money wise but you can makeshift it just just put crap around until it works you know? right right I had to um of all the times to record an audio book and this was I usually do kids books like yeah. children's books which oh, are sure. 90 pages yeah. and they have pictures in them <laughs> so I'm like okay boom I can knock this out my um the uh the publishing company um emailed me and this was before I was leaving moving out of my house in New Jersey yeah. to come to live in New York in the city and um they had another project for me but this was a um I guess a tween book, I guess you would say was 300 pages okay. of like thing. It was, it's called minion and it's uh think it's, it's twilight, but with superheroes, oh, not, okay. not vampires. And so it was, they needed the first chapter right on the day I was moving. And oh, it was like, I, I was in a hotel for a little while because the apartment in the city wasn't ready yet. Yeah. So I tried to record in the, in a hotel room. Didn't really work. It was, yeah. the mic was picking up everything. <laughs> tried to, I, went to, down to my mother's who lives, she lives down the Jersey shore and I couldn't record during the day because they were still rebuilding after Hurricane Sandy. Oh, so all around her, all just all around all the time. And so cars going by, I had to wait till nighttime. Oh, I had my. to record, um, he said it was 300 pages and every so often you hear a car go by. <laughs> so it was a That's long so process. Hard. I even said to my, the publishers, like, if you want to get somebody else to do this, you can, <laughs> because I'm really not in the mood right now, but they were, no, no, they want you. They want you. So. So uh, that's that's really good to know for for like everyone who's going through those similar problems as a new voice actor to to know that that's my ice maker by the way. Oh, I thought that <laughs> someone was knocking on the door. No, um, uh, it's good to know that 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 even once you get to the top upper upper echelon, of for uh, you're still gonna have the same freaking problems. Oh, everybody does. Everyone yeah. has the same problems with. There's no point where it becomes easier or perfect. You just kind of get used to how to troubleshoot better. And how to? Do you have any strategies for editing? Uh, do you? Uh, you've gotten speedier as time goes. I found that I've gotten much speedier as time goes yeah, by. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I use Twisted Wave for auditions and I've also for for um, jobs because it's very simple. It's very. Um, it records your one track. You can record in mono, but or stereo. You don't need to record in yes. stereo for your voice. But um, you, I guess, for other projects. But for auditions and even for um, actual bookings and jobs, I've been using uh, Twisted Wave, which has been great. A trick I learned from uh, Joe Cipriano yeah. again was um, recording room sound, just yeah. the sound of your of the booth with nothing going on, just total silence. Grab about five seven seconds of that, and then. Um, I go in and I record what it is because you don't realize when you're recording how much mouth noise you have. Yeah. At least I do. Yeah. And um, like all the little pops and all yeah. these little like little swallow things. If you ever like pull out all those little noises from your mouth and try just put it onto one track, of, <laughs> uh, uh, it sounds disgusting. <laughs> it sounds gross. It's like all these little... <laughs> Ugh. And even breaths. Yeah. Taking out breaths. Now some some you don't have to take out all the breaths. Yeah. But I, I tend I find myself doing that actually. But for an audiobook, um I was leaving some breaths in. Yeah. Yeah, for uh, audiobooks I think it it's works. It's a little out different. But it, still yeah. it's still like um any kind of pops or any kind of little clicks in your in your um with um, your saliva because it happens and uh, pulling those out and just taking um, and Twisted Wave is really great for this. You can copy um, a piece of the silent room sound okay, and you can, there's a way to just go in, find the, um, where the little noise is that you don't want yeah. and have a 
perfectly take out and just replace it, do a, a copy or you're, cu you're cutting it out, but you're pasting. You're pasting over that noise with the room sound and you can do it in exactly that same amount of time. Oh. So I know, I know in Pro Tools, I'm sure there's a way, there must be a way to do it in there, but then again, I don't know. I haven't used Pro Tools in a while. I only use that to like mix stuff. But um, where you would copy it like some room sound, like maybe you've taken a second of it. Yeah. And then when you would paste it somewhere else, it's just pasting that second. Okay. And then you have to trim it. Yeah, yeah. In Twisted Wave, you can just choose like that exact amount of time okay. that's already that you already recorded, so you don't have to keep trimming it. So if yeah. it's a quick little something, it'll there's it's called um, what's it called Smart Smart Paste, I think. Oh it's called. wow, they they have like a, a specific. Yeah, it's a specific um, little function on. Wow. I think it's I think it's Control uh, Control V. I think it is on the on on your keyboards. So if you're playing along at home, it's con on your Macs. It's Control V. Yeah, I I, f I found that when when uh... Like right now, I'm staring at Steve's um, uh, voice in audition, which is a mess because be, no, it's it's still going. Oh, there it is. It's, okay. it's so tiny right now. <laughs> it's but, a mess. Like you could you could tell that there's no there's no silent points. But what I've what I've found like that's helpful for people who are editing is that you'll actually as you as you continuously edit your voice, you'll see you'll be able to see where the breaths are without even hearing the sure. audio. Yeah, you know, you'll like see that after a while. The, the tiny little hits that you're like, oh, that's where that's at. And you'll be able to tell where your slate is always in front and it always has like a specific type of shape. Yeah. And uh, and some people actually use clickers. I have try. one. Do you have a clicker? Have a clicker. Is it like a dog? Clicker or what? Um, it? No, it's just it's just a regular clicker. In fact, let's uh, let's go grab it and we'll go, <laughs> we'll test it out here. Walk so in. there. So uh, this is from um, and I'm showing it to Justin here. This is when Voiceover Body Shop was East West Audio Body Shop. Oh. Okay. This is when uh, Dan used to live in Buffalo. Oh wow. And George uh, was out in uh, out in Los Angeles, and now uh, now Dan has moved to uh, Los Angeles, and uh, so they could do the show together. So since it's not East West anymore, it's now Voiceover Body Shop, but. It's, Oh. That's it. And in fact, if you look probably on your yeah, on the waveform there. Yeah, you can see a there, huge waves, line. You'll and see like a, t a two lines yeah. right in a row. And that's when you know. And this definitely comes in handy like if, if you're reading some copy and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, bleh. Yeah. yeah just but, and then you continue. Oh, and then you can see on your in your edit, oh, there's the, there's the there's two clicks right there. They're the two lines. And you can pull it out and you can move the proper copy. Uh, yeah, now here's, a, here's, a, here's an interesting question. When, uh, when you audition... When you're doing your auditions, your daily auditions, do you try and get it all in one take, or are you just an editor type of person where you just run it until you got the well? You they feel don't. Like you've got the take. They don't call me one take tardio for nothing. <laughs> no, well, that I, is that is. Not, I see the, the there's that's what's on his front door. One take. <laughs> it's, a, it's on the mailbox downstairs too. <laughs> no, um, I try. I really do, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it's like blah. It's, yeah. It depends on the the flow of the copy too, yeah. Because there are some things. Uh, I had something the other day where they wanted that that fast read, like at the end of a yeah. of the, a pharmaceutical yeah, type thing. Kind of that, stuff, yeah, yeah, you know, and um, so that I t take each. Um, I try to do it in one shot. That's tough. Like just. <gasps> And then get into it with a deep breath first, and then, um, but then I was just, I just kept flubbing, and so yeah. I was like, I gotta, I have to do it sentence by sentence, and then I'll pull it together, and and that way, it de it depends on what the lines are. Yeah, see, see, with the from from a, my perspective, uh, since I do non-union voiceover, I'm doing all the cheapy jobs, so I'm doing about thirty auditions a day, and I have no. I have no patience to try and get one take of anything done. No, I, just keep, I wouldn't either. Just go straight stuffed. through it like a monster and then come back. If I spent more, there was one person who, I don't know, a coach had told her this. She was like, make sure you spend at least 40 minutes on every audition. And I was Whoa. like, well, what? I was like, once you get to a certain level, like with, with non-union, don't spend more than, don't, the less time you spend on the audition, the better. It's a grinding process at and this if point. Doing, especially if you're doing 30 a day. Jesus. Yeah. Wow. So like I just I just run through it and I've got and I sometimes bring my clicker the the type of I don't know if um, there's little dog clickers that are the same kind of mm -hmm. figure if because I don't know if you can go on Amazon and get the East West clicker or I something. don't know if they have um, <laughs> yeah I I forgot how I got this um, I I don't know if they I don't know if they were selling them or what they couldn't have been much money for this little thing yeah, if you could yeah, see it's it. a little plastic it's, it's a little red plastic button. little just a, yeah just a yeah, and. Um, it, it definitely comes in handy, and it was. I wish I had it like sooner than later, and with some projects. But ever since I, it's a godsend. 
This is this has been great. Uh, do you have any advice for new people coming in who have never done voiceover? Uh, admittedly, every you know uh, every veteran voiceover us- person usually says like, just because someone says you could do voiceover doesn't mean you should start doing voiceover. I think but, you should check it out. But yeah, yeah, I mean, like, do you have any kind of uh, optimistic style things like something that? Uh, you know, like, because they're going to be grinding. It's going to be a hard road once once they start. It's 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 going to be a, a lot of money going to different ways. And, you know, do you have any good words of advice for the newcomers out uh, there? I would say subscribe to Justin's podcast. That's first and foremost. <laughs> um, second is, again, um, checking. Well, you know, a good way to do it. There's some, some other, like, web web series. Like, we, we talked about yeah. VoiceOver Body Shop. Yeah, There's exactly. another one out of L.A. called uh, VO Buzz Weekly. Okay. okay. Which is a great one there where they interview uh, people in the industry. And they're all pretty much giving the same advice, maybe some new topics of, uh, of interest as well. But, and again, once you start hearing the same things over and over from both shows and um, even in your show and any other kind of um, shows out there that you start hearing the same thing, then start investigating a little more yeah and um oh i've heard this microphone is like really great and so maybe i'm just just read up on it don't go running out and buying anything yet yeah and make sure that you get the uh, there's a refund policy and that which which i got from uh, a plug for sweetwater too is where i got this equipment here where they at first special orders are not returnable but i said well this is a this is quite a bit of money so uh we we worked something out yeah, just in case I mean, just in case make sure they give your money back if you don't like something i mean right. this, is a, this is a big piece of equipment 400 dollars or more right. and you know i mean it's this is it is an impressive mic uh, but uh, and this is an impressive studio thank you for having me here and, and hosting everything voiceover um uh steve tardio.com right steve tardio.com uh, go check out his one of his 10 amazing demos which are freaking amazing and i you should have been in la years ago i was i was holding back because there were some things were happening here yeah and yeah. so now um i've um oh there's some um other great um also, um, consultants that have workshops for voiceover, which are really great, too. Do you have any recommendation to people who are in New York or L.A. of people that they should, uh, uh, I guess, take classes from? Yeah. Um, well, actually, there was one coach. He actually he just was in New York, and he moved to L.A. He's going to be working with video games out there um, for casting for those. A uh, guy called David Lyerly, who was my first agent. Cool. And so uh, he's moved on to uh, bigger and better things with uh, going out to an agency out in L.A. to um, cast for video games. Um, Mary Lynn Wisner, mm-hmm. um, she's Voices Voice Casting. She has a l- things called Meet the Pros Night. Okay. Which uh, they're most those are in L.A. because that's where she's based. But she will bring in casting directors and producers from different networks and different productions. And they will give their um, – their years of experience and you get to read for them and yeah. that's what i'm going to be doing in may I'm Sweet. Going, she said um had a couple that i was definitely interested in going to a couple workshops so i'm like i'm going they do cost money but they're not an arm and a leg that's yeah. another thing to watch out for for newbies um who are you know anything over maybe a hundred bucks yeah. you know question that the the names that you've also been giving and that they're uh, there's a pattern that they're always like casting directors agents producers those are those are like for the most part, I'm not gonna do a, a never. But if there's someone, if like if, a, if it's an actor giving out a, a workshop or something like that, there's more. There's much more upside to a casting director or an agent right. or a, or a producer because they're gonna be able to get you jobs. Right. right, right. Some actors and some voiceover actors who do this, yeah, uh, it is. You know, they they do it and they'll give you their years of. Um, uh, wisdom and advice yeah. on what you're doing, but also don't limit it to just, uh, oh, well, he's a successful voiceover, or she's a successful voiceover, so I'm going to do what they say. Also, yeah. you know, spread, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Go to, um, like, like you were saying, the casting directors and other producers that are, that are holding these through legitimate places. I know there was some, um, um, I think this was for on camera though that there was a crackdown out in LA for yeah. uh, places that were like you know pay to play. Yeah, the that's it's 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 tough because it's uh, everyone will take your money now. Sure, <laughs> so I mean, everybody wants to, exactly. So uh, just after you you kind of like you ask around, there are people that are in this business that'll be more than happy to say, yeah, Absolutely. I went to like what I'm saying to you now. Yeah, Mary Lynn, help, uh, Mary Lynn also. Um, she used to, I think she's going to start doing this again. She would have uh, meet the pros night via um, like the Google Hangouts. 
Yeah. So you could be anywhere from, you don't have to be in LA, you don't have to be in New York, you can live around the country and be part of these um, meetups and uh, and workout groups. And I was sitting right, right there and when uh, we were doing um, a workshop for someone from one of the networks and lo and behold, that cast that casting director or creative director uh emailed me asking hey could you audition for this promo for uh, for what was it for for price is right nice and uh, i didn't get it but still it was yeah. like still i mean that person now knows me yeah Th that's the kind of those are the kind of people that you need to eat need to know and get to know and they're more than happy to help you out and they have the right connections to uh put you in front of the right people it's all a big big world of networking for this business yeah yeah it's it's it's, it's good to know because like i i uh, I respect your opinion more than just wandering the internet, uh, just trying to figure out who will take my money, you know. But uh, and it's and it's it's in, it's imperative to know that like uh, Steve's a, uh, a union actor, already very successful, still training, still still putting himself out there, still always networking. Which is you know we get lazy every now and then if we have any remote success, you have a tendency to pull back. Sure. But. You know, I mean, like uh, a good actor and a good uh, a good voiceover person is constantly trying to get constant, constantly out there. And always, always looking up like what the the latest thing is or whatever the latest. It, if it's technology, if it's certain productions going on, if it's certain um, there are conferences that happen. I know there's something uh, Vo Atlanta which yeah, is happening later about this going month. That, but just, um, yeah, it, I, I was gonna, but um, the LA thing that came yeah. up in May was like, oh, I'm, I, this is something I've been yeah. wanting to do for all. I did it a, a few years ago going to Los Angeles, but I really didn't, I didn't have like a set focus, like boom, animation, I'm going for that. It was oh, yeah. more like, it was just like a general, like, well, commercials, promos, if there's some video game characters, but this one is like, no, I'm, now, once you start doing this for a while, like you were saying, and you get more advanced tech uh, with the technology, it's also like what you think you should be doing yeah. and what you hear. What what you get hired for majority of figuring out what what your market is and uh, just aiming for it correctly. Yeah. And like for me, it's been uh, I know uh, for me, it's, I keep hearing animation, so yeah. that's where I'm that's where I'm going to give it a shot. And uh, like another person, uh, she was told a friend of mine, she said, "Oh, you're you're industrial." Like okay. you can, and you should be instructional and educational kind of, kind of reads. And another person was like, oh, well, you're definitely narration and for like, uh, for, uh, those, um, adult contemporary books. So everybody's got their own, own niche. So that's another great thing about this business. There could be hundreds of thousands of voiceover people out there, but you only sound like you. So, and you're going to have a certain niche and you go for that niche and you can have a pretty good, uh, success, have pretty right. good success with this. All right, thanks, thanks, Steve, for having me here. This has been great, and it's going to be supremely informed. This has been the longest podcast Oops. I've done in a while. Sorry, so it's going to be a long edit for this, but I will happily do it. Okay. But uh, uh, thank you so much for 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 having me and and showing off. Which this is, this, I'm sure this will help a lot of people. So I right. Well, I hope so. Yeah, I hope it does. Right. Click away. Take care. Brother. Take care.